what's often the, the easiest way for us to de-stress, to find some space between career and family is to do activities alone, to find that hobby that allows you to just completely unplug. And that might be mountain biking, that might be camping on your own, that might be building model airplanes where you just get to paint and you're just in the moment, completely consumed in something that you're passionate about. And of course, these activities, they're solo. Mm -hmm. They're not an opportunity for you to be meeting new people. They're not an opportunity for you to be inviting the people that you already are connected with, your acquaintances or your friends that have drifted away back into your life. And it can feel very quickly like you're on the path of being a lone wolf, losing the wolf pack, not gaining the wolf pack. So what is the, the first step is how can we tap back in to that state where we are at our best, we are passionate, we are having a great time, we're relaxed, we're comfortable. And how can we do that with new people or people we already know and strengthen those relationships and give us a chance to build new friendships? And that's exploring your hobbies in a way that allows you to socialize, in a way that actually brings people back into your life instead of you spending another Sunday afternoon doing it alone, watching the ball game alone, building the model airplane alone, going on the hike alone. Yeah, I want to add, this is a, the same thing that we discuss uh, to help with dates. Who wants to go on a date sitting across the table from somebody that they don't know, hoping that magic happens, right? No one wants to be in that position. And in fact, I think all of us have been in that position too many times to want to have to do that again. So by focusing on your passions and interests and core values in a social way, well, this makes the priority of getting together the event, the passion that you're sharing, the interest that you, you have together. So you can focus on that. Everything else, the magic moments will happen naturally. You can't force those magic moments, right? And this becomes difficult because everyone starts to think like, well, I don't even know anyone who thinks like me or that I get along with right now. That's okay. That will come later. First, let's find some some interests, passions, and core values that we can engage in a social manner so that it's naturally to, to hang out with other people. And let's be honest, I'm not saying hike every day with a group of people. I'm not saying go on your runs with a group of people. I totally understand the, the presence and the solitude and the enjoyment and fulfillment you get out of doing activities alone. But if you once a week can engage with the run club, if you once a week can do a workout class where you're socializing, if you once a week can go to the hiking meetup group and hike in a social environment, you are creating space for the connection that you're craving, for the friendship and tribe and wolf pack that you want to build. If we don't create that space, it's not going to happen on its own. We just know that as these scientific studies shared by Michael show us that we're drifting further away from close confidants if we let nature and technology take their course right now. So the first step is recognizing, okay, I want to build and foster better relationships. Friendship is important to me. For some of our clients, it's recognizing, unfortunately, that their spouse is now shouldering the kin work, their best friend, their confidant, their partner, their adventurer. And all of this pressure is now on your significant other and your spouse to be your therapist, to be your coach, to be there, to be that confidant, to hear about the ball game, to hear about what your kids are doing that you're excited about. And that's a lot of pressure on the other person that you care the most about in your life. It's a lot of roles for them to play and vice versa. Emails that we get and when, I'm, when we're talking with clients, it's, it's usually I'm driving my spouse crazy, right? I'm putting all this pressure to be all these things on her or him. And I need to make relationships outside of my main relationship or all of that pressure is going to collapse my most important relationship. Right? And this is something that you have to come to terms with out of respect for your partner and your relationship. 
Well, sometimes it's their partner pushing and prodding them to join our coaching (laughs) program to work with us because their partner is saying, I can't do it. You know, and one of my favorite examples, so Aaron started working with me in an executive coaching program and his passion was mountain biking in Chicago. Now, as you can imagine, it's not what first snaps to mind when you think of mountain biking. And of course, for him, mountain biking was a way to get on his own, to explore the mountain on a bike, to be out in nature and in almost a meditative way for him. But at the same time, he was feeling a lot of pressure that his social group was starting to drift away and really center itself around drinking. And as Johnny said earlier, he wasn't necessarily into just going to bars week in and week out in order to have that socialization. So we worked together on a a battle plan to actually train for a mountain bike race. Now, you wouldn't think a mountain bike race would necessarily be social, but actually it's what happens after the race. So if you've ever run a marathon, you've ever done an adventure race, if you've ever done an obstacle course, yes, the race is competitive and you're trying to beat your time and you're trying to beat others and you're you're tapping into what you love about yourself, performing at your best. But then after, there's this euphoria when everyone is in a great state and you all accomplished something together. You took on this crazy course. It was muddy. It was rainy. You completed it. And you also have a shared passion for racing, for mountain biking, for obstacle courses. So by grabbing a six pack of non-alcoholic beer and hanging out instead of just going home after the race to share with his fiance how he did, he is actually able to find a community in Chicago of guys who go mountain biking regularly that he now could share his passion with and create space to socialize. 